Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm going to cover the queen, the real queen, the dead queen, tomorrow on my other channel. I just put up a video <laughs> on my other channel where she was sick, and I'll cover that she died tomorrow um, on that channel. But, uh, you know, no one needs to send me messages. I know she's dead. <laughs> um, Britney Spears, calm down. Hello. Hell no. Stay woke. Oh, and here's my ass. And so it showed her on a um, boat, I guess. And she just has her bikini bottoms on and she's moving her legs back and forth. And this has to do with her family. Brazil loves you. Live your life, queen. Live your best life. Beautiful queen, XOXOXO. Enjoy your life, queen. Um, so this is not the real queen. This is Brittany. But then it goes up to this dude wearing Brittany's top and doing this. And then there's some swimming or whatever in Brazil. And then there's Brittany dance. Good morning. Look at her. I'm going slow. I'm reaching out. I'm going to do a slow dance. No spinning today. I'm going to go up and down. Put my arms out like a ballerina. Reach out to you very slowly. Put my hands over my face. Reach for the stars. Go down again around my waist. I'm going to do that with my hair. Let's point at you. And then no spinning. Just going around doing this today. Going very slowly. Uh-oh. No, here we go. When my hair, I had to spin. I could not, I had to spin. Spin again. Oh, no, back to slow. Kick my leg out. Do that one. Spin, spin, spin. Spin, spin, spin. spin. <laughs> Smile at you. Walk backwards. Reach my hands out. Is this beginning again? Do that, yeah. So she, um, you know, she's doing what Brittany do. And so I got a number of comments. You know, anybody read, leaving a comment, leave Brittany alone, is an auto ban, right? Um, you know, there's no reason to say that because it's been said so many times, but in terms of, um, Brittany being a victim, which I said over and over again, you don't care about Cardi B. You don't care how Cardi B gets treated by me or anybody else or Lady Gaga or any number of these celebrity, celebrity liberal women who have all been abused, been exploited and many of them child stars, whatever it is, right? And, you know, everybody has to deal. Everybody has had some miserable things happen to them. You know, we all go through things. We've all been, you know, mistreated by somebody in our lives and some people worse than others. But Britney's wasn't the worst. She wasn't the worst treated person. She isn't even the worst treated person in Hollywood. And so she, you know, she seems to be a very nasty person. She's really self-centered. And if you start excusing people just because they've been victimized, well, you can excuse everybody for everything. Everyone's received mistreatment. You know, I talked about how there was a woman who um, was friends with my ex, and I was leaving India, and like I knew I needed to tell her we were getting divorced. And this woman kind of li li uh, looked up to my ex and you know, I didn't really want to talk to her about it because it just wasn't something I felt like doing. But I saw her and, and I'm like, you know, and I think she had heard and she said, what's going on? I said, well, you know, we're getting divorced. I think I told her husband or whatever. And she said, um, you know, what's the reason? And I said, well, she's with another guy, but there was so much more to it. Like if you've heard my story, that was the least of it. And and she was really getting, she got mad at her. And then I said, well, you know, she was, she was abused, right, by her mom and dad, you know, sexually abused. And the woman said, well, who wasn't? <laughs> and so, you know, that's a way to understand it. Most women suffer some kind of, I mean, everybody does and women may be more specifically. And so, you know, Brittany's responsible for herself, right? She has the money and the resources and she doesn't have to be such a whiny victim about everything and just, you know, focused on that and her parents, how horrible they are. We all had bad parents. Some parents are worse than others. Everyone has to get over it. And you have to remember that there's a plan. If God has a plan, then your parents, you know, there's this idea that you choose your parents. Your soul chooses your parents. Your soul chooses the circumstance of your birth. For whatever reason, you know, it's there. 
and so on. It says here, top 10 Billboard, babe. We did it, Brit. Have you seen your songs? Number six on Billboard. Way to go. He did it. This guy did it. Him and Brittany. And a little bit of help from Elton John and, you know, her Brittany team, right? But she has millions of dollars of resources and she has all of her stuff, right? And she has a kind of annoying voice, annoying personality. And she could work on herself just like everybody else. You know, and I, you know, if you're, if you're not going to complain about my treatment of, of other stars, then don't complain about Britney's, my treatment of Britney, right? Like, you know, she's a white girl from the South, and, you know, she used to be a Christian, and you identify with her more than you do Cardi B or somebody else. And that's why you have your own personal prejudice, because the behavior is the same. Speaking of which, one of my viewers said, have you seen Nancy at the beach? <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing this, but it's kind of funny. Does she have twin daughters here? And it's like three of the horsemen of the apocalypse walking down the beach in California. Look at that golem-like gnarled mitt that she has here holding the red satanic phone. Speaking of has-beens, Julie, Julia Roberts says, we took 90s romantic romancoms for granted. Julia Roberts knows rom romcoms have start have starred in a string of successful ones in the nineties, Pretty Woman, My Best Friend's Wedding, Runaway Bride, Nighting Hill, and she has something to say about them. I think we didn't appreciate the bumper crop of romantic economies that we had then. You don't see all the effort in puppet strings. That's why I'm making this. I I found the word the term puppet strings interesting here. Because it's fun and sweet. And people are laughing and kissing and being mischievous. She's got some kind of thing going on there. And then there was this. Angelina Jolie claims Brad Pitt's, the Wu Stealer, masterminded a plan to seize control of their winery in countersuit. Angelina Jolie is firing back with her own countersuit against ex-Brad Pitt over the wine business they previously co-owned together. Jolie's business... Novell is seeking more than $250 million in damages, accusing Pitt of waging a vindictive war against Jolie ever since she filed for divorce back in 2016. These counterclaims lay bare the true nature of Pitt's egregious misconduct. To be clear, it is Pitt, not Jolie, Novell, or any of the other defendants who, have, who has acted in a hostile, destructive, and illegal manner. Pitt's behavior has caused serious harm to Novell, reads the documents. The attorneys claim that Pitt 58 masterminded, <laughs> he doesn't seem like a mastermind, a so far successful plan to seize control of the Chateau Marave, the south of France vineyard and home, that back in 2008 the pair who shared six kids bought a, control, a controlling stake in. They allege Pitt has now frozen Frozen Noval out of uh, Chateau Maral <laughs> his treats as his per and, and treats it as his personal fiefdom and has wasted its assets spending millions on vanity projects, including one more million dollar on a million dollars on a swimming pool, renovations, and other funds restoring a recording studio. The legal filing claims Jolie forty seven allegedly negotiated for months with Pitt's side to sell him half of her of the winery. But he made an 11th hour demand for erroneous and irrelevant conditions, including a provision designed to prohibit Jolie from speaking publicly about the events that led up to their break, the breakdown of their marriage. It was called a hush clause. Okay, this is enough of this. Um, that's Brad Pitts. So Courtney Cox posted this on Instagram. She's listening to Heartless by Kanye. I actually didn't write the tweet that said Friends wasn't funny, but I wish I had. And she sees that, and she gets, you know, that, that evil face. Friends wasn't funny, and she turns off his Heartless. And, um, you know. <laughs> and, of course, the queen is dead, like I said. I'll cover that on my other channel tomorrow. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about the Britney stuff and the left-right paradigm. But first, I had um, 
something I think is fairly important because of the feedback I've been getting and some of the, the messages that people have been writing me. So I'm going to put this on my Pockets of the Future channel today, the day the Queen died, and I'll feature it in the beginning of my video for the Apocalypse Now um, Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies. So I've been feeling, you know, I don't want to say weird. I don't know if that's, that's not the right word. I don't want to say off. Different than I normally feel. I've had some vivid dreams, which I talk about in a Journey series video that's going up probably on Saturday or tomorrow. I don't know. Friday or Saturday. And I've been like tired at times and it's just sad for no reason. And then a little bit of anger, not so much. And then some days just feeling unsettled. I wouldn't call it fear, but waking up feeling a little bit unsettled. And, you know, and I talk about how I felt this way right before the big event 2001. You know, I felt like this before. It's different this time. I don't really, I can't put a finger on it. Uh, but there's just, uh, you know, a difference in my internal condition. My meditations are good. I feel mostly pretty good, but I could notice, you know, that there's like something like a disturbance in the force kind of a thing. Doesn't necessarily have to be bad. But I put this out there on my uh, my channel, the uh, Apocalypse Now channel, and I talked about it. And I got so many comments of people saying, oh, wow, they're just going through it, right? And people are having physical issues or, you know, it seems like there's a an uptick in feeling... Uh, Maybe not so great, or you, know, you can read the comments for yourself. And I also got a message from somebody saying, you know, they had like suicidal thoughts that they didn't feel like they were their own thoughts, right? You know, and I was thinking about that because I know that the government has, I mean, if you think about the idea of subliminal messaging, the book called Propaganda by this guy Edward Bernays about how they could just own people. You know, they could just um, get them to think any way they wanted through television. When television first came out, they realized they could just hypnotize people with the television and move them any way they wanted internally. And, you know, that was a, back in whatever the, the 50s or 40s or whatever that, you know, period of time was the, when they were just um, starting to have movies and TVs, shows and things. Very old book. And you think about the levels of technological development since then. And so their ability for mind control, and I'm not talking just about the government, but we're talking about private corporations and we're talking about the military industrial complex and you know individual people who could develop things on their own without anybody even noticing. So there's that. Plus on the spiritual level, I know that there's ways to do spiritual warfare where you can make people feel a certain way or you can even, uh, you know, change their thoughts. I mean, in the heartfulness meditation, Saj Marg meditation, Master Charji said, you know, the transmission that's given this divine love can also be, there's a tr transmission that would be like, so, um, you know, if, if it was given, people would just run into the sea, like the movie, The Happening or The Birdcage or Bird Box, wherever that movie was. Don't tell me, don't care, don't need to know, don't need to know. Um, <laughs> But there are spiritual ways that this can be done without any use of technology. And we know that because everybody's probably experienced a bad luck shrep lock in their life. Somebody that when you're around them, they just drain you, right? They, they uh, drain the life out of you. I mean, we've all felt this unless you're one of those people. you know. <laughs> but you're talking to somebody and they're just draining the energy from you or making you feel whatever they're feeling. And this happens with relatives, especially people, you know, in your family that whenever you're around them, you just feel worse and down and bad and, and things of that nature. And of course, there's things that go on in the environment, the full, the full moon and, you know, other things that happen on an atmospheric level, rainstorms, lightning. I mean, all these things affect the physical body and then there's the spiritual body, the subtle bodies. 5G has been out for a while now. And so, you know, there's all of that. So people have also been telling me that Mercury goes into retrograde, which I've talked about. I'm not a big astrology person or whatever that is, but the planet Mercury, when it goes into re retro, when it goes retrograde, I almost always know. 
because I can just tell. Like I almost always, I feel like there's, you know, there's issues with communication and, you know, there's just a certain way that um, it makes you feel or just the ways it affects your life. And I'll look it up and I'll be like, yeah, it's in the retrograde. And so with all of those factors, there's a big anniversary date coming. You know, it's going to be opening day of football on tonight and then, of course, Sunday, uh, which is, you know, a big anniversary day. And so there's all these things, the election coming up, the, you know, everything that's going on, very tumultuous time in our country. And so I just wanted to put this out there and people can comment about what they're going through and feeling because maybe other people are feeling exactly the same way you are. If you're having suicidal thoughts and it's something that you never really think of, you're not depressed, you're not a person that, I mean, you might might not even be feeling bad, but you just have these weird thoughts or self-destructive thoughts or something like that. Maybe you want to think about those thoughts as being something that's being done to you or something that's, you know, being projected into you or, you know, just a way to understand that if other people are going through that kind of thing or anything that I'm talking about here, that there's something, there's something afoot, right? (laughs) And so, you know, you can leave your comments and stories or whatever you feel comfortable sharing about, you know, what's going on with you. And then maybe other people will be like, yeah, that's exactly what's happening to me. And then, you know, there's a, a realization that it isn't like something that's coming from you or, you know, there's something else going on here. But anyways, um, I'm going to post the same exact thing on my other channel. So if you listen to it here, you can skip the first five minutes of the video tomorrow on my, uh, in my apocalypse now or whatever, you know, this is, uh, you know, around, uh, seven minutes long. So the other piece of this, the stuff with Brittany and, you know, um, the left, right paradigm, or even like football or anything that's going on in the world. You know, I um, have my own feeling about all these things. Like if you enjoy something and, you know, whatever brings you comfort or it's familiar, like for me, watching sports is something from like my past life, like something I did years ago when I was a kid and then older in my 20s, I stopped doing it for a long time. Didn't have a TV, didn't follow stuff as much. And then, you know, started doing it again recently, whatever, covered sports in my videos. You know, I believe that it's rigged to whatever extent. It's entertainment. It's, you know, I mean, that it isn't, you know, organic in terms of the outcome of the of the contest. But I enjoy it, right? You know, at whatever level I enjoy it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get sick of it. Whatever, same thing with TV shows, movies, whatever it might be. You know, I cover things, symbolism, and, you know, there's an agenda there. and But they also can be entertaining, right? And so it's the same thing with politics and voting. The whole system's rigged. But if you get into it, you get into it. As long as you realize it's an illusion. And, I, you know, and that's still up to you. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I, the way I think it, it's healthy is you understand that it's not that serious, right? It's an illusion, you know, it's mind control, it is whatever it is. Certainly you don't invest in it. And if you want to follow something, you want to get into it a little bit, you know, but then you realize you're just watching a show like I do here. You know, that's why people can't understand. Like sometimes I'm talking about like it's an illusion. Sometimes I'm talking about like it's I believe in the official story. It's just, you know, it's a show. It's like you're talking about a show you're watching, all of it. And some of it you might enjoy more than other things. And, you know, we only have so much time left before there are big changes and, you know, whatever way we choose to spend our free time. Like, I don't care if you're a Britney fan or, you know, whatever it is. Like, I like some of these celebrities better than others. I don't really have a, you know, I'm not really a fan. You know, I don't have that part of me in my personality. There's things I admire about people, things I, you know, uh, you know, I appreciate about them. I like some people better than others. And so, you know, that is whatever it is. But again, it's just a show. These are all characters. It really doesn't mean anything. You know, the system's collapsing anyway. There's no reason to get all uptight. There's no reason to, you know, break off relationships with your relatives because they voted for someone else or they believe something else. Or It's just not that serious, right? Because we can't affect the, the outcome of what's going to happen. You know, there's a great whispers message one of the ones about the predictions, prophecies, where Babaji, the second master of the system, was in a 
you know, disembodied soul gave these channeled messages. And he says, you can neither stop time nor modify the current system in place. Can't change the system and you can't stop time, right? This is going to run its course, whatever way it does that. You see things going a certain way and you make the best of them, right? And, you know, you got to understand that there's, I mean, people are going to go through things because things are changing. There's the magnetic poles that might be shifting. There's, like I said, 5G, whatever capabilities the government and technological people have out there to influence the humanity. I mean, it's all these things, right? There are changes afoot and people are feeling unstable, unsettled. The news, you know, the apocalypse, the movies, TV shows, there's all this apocalyptic stuff out there. And so it's something where, you know, you just got to realize that it's um, going to happen one way or another and there's not much we can do about it, but we can change the way that we we experience it, right? We can, you know, ride the wave of it, change our attitude, don't look at it like we're losing things, look at it like, you know, our soul chose to be here for a reason and there's some plan or some benefit to it and, you know, enjoy what's left, right? Because once things go, they won't come back. And there's going to be a lot of things disappearing instead of, you know, trying to cling on to them. Just enjoy them and let them leave when they leave, you know, with any, without any sense of your regret or, you know, like you're missing something that you, you know, that now it's going to be something different. Um, because we, you know, there hasn't been this kind of large scale change that's happened. Uh, most of, most of uh, life on planet Earth has just sort of moved forward. There's individual countries and individual people that experience, I mean, everyone has their own private apocalypse, right? Not just in terms of death, but you have your, you know, moments in, in life that seem apocalyptic for, for you individually. But in terms of a collective, we haven't seen something like this, a global collective, you know, in thousands of years, and here it comes. Anyways, you know, <laughs> free Britney. <laughs> Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely pointing from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.